Hey, y'all, I've been out of town a couple days, uh, working, doing some structural repairs. Um, got a little concerned, you know, you get concerned when there's not a lot going on. And it was like always, just like everything always goes, uh, you think there's no jobs going on. And then all of a sudden I got so busy, I was missing, I was missing jobs because of the jobs I was doing. Uh, this is what I got right here on the on the table right now. Something uh, a fella actually brought the trailer by here this weekend and dropped it off on Sunday. And I was uh, in Kingwood doing structural repair on Sunday. And if it wasn't for Tina being here, I wouldn't have known he dropped it off. But he did last week make me aware that it needed fix. Said he'd drop it off if he got time. Well, he dropped it off on Sunday, and just a couple hours later, he come and picked it back up. Well, the guy. He's so busy, he can't leave his stuff here for very long. Uh, he's got a lot of work going on. But uh, what I've got here is a tarp for a dump trailer that's broken. And so let's take a look. And what we're looking at right now, this tarp for this dump trailer on its roller, uh, it's upside down. But this is, the, this is the problem that he's got, obviously, where the the bracket that holds the the tarp roller onto the trailer, uh, it's taking a beating and it's not holding up. And uh, clearly it appears that uh, plenty of weld on it. The weld ain't breaking. The channel's strong enough. This material that it's welded to is just so thin. That's the weak point. And that's where it's coming apart. Um, we don't want to just weld that up. I mean, you could do that if you're in a big hurry, but you'd want to add something to, to try to stop this from taking place now. And I realized what this feller did, he dropped off that whole trailer on Sunday because he knows I'll work on the weekends on his stuff. He dropped it off on Sunday, the entire trailer, because there was probably a few hours where he didn't need it. He's realized that he's he can remove the tarp and use the trailer, which I'm sure is what he's doing today. Um, and this morning, he dropped off just the tarp and the tarp roller system here so that he can use his trailer while I'm fixing this. So he was, he was thinking on uh, a way to get it fixed without him doing without that piece of equipment. Uh, First thing I notice is we got to get this tarp out of the way. If you look where the tarp is in here, that's close enough to that. I can't even get my finger in between there. If I was to take off welding on this thing with that tarp uh, rolled up like that, it's going to ruin the tarp. Catch it right on fire, burn holes in it, or something bad's going to happen. So we're going to have to pull the tarp out that shouldn't be a big deal but the next thing is like if we're going to put a gusset on this we got to make sure we don't do anything that's going to be in the way of reinstalling it so we got to do a little csi we got to do a little investigation and what i can use information wise to investigate is this dirt and wear When I look at this right here, I'm thinking this part right here sets on the front of the trailer. We can't put nothing in here. If you look at the dirt back here, it's not being interfered with. I think you could put something here, here, or here. And uh, be no trouble. It wouldn't... Uh, it wouldn't interfere with anything if you did that. So that's what we're gonna to need to do. We need to get the tarp out of the way. We might slide something in there to make sure that we don't burn the tarp. Uh, we're gonna to have to whack this back to where it's somewhat plumb. This one here is obviously, she's leaning way back. Uh, we'll whack those around where they look a little better and weld them up and then get some metal on there to uh, try to stop this from happening again.
I did power brush this. I sanded, grinded, did a couple things for cleanup. Some of the sanding with the sanding pad that I did is for later when I try to put a plate on it. But uh, one of the things that I want to mention, uh, this is an area with this thin metal to thick metal where a lot of novice welders, if they were trying to fix this crack, they'd fire up and start welding and then they'd melt a hole in it. And they're wondering like, what, what did I do wrong, you know? And they're turning the machine down and they're doing different things. Now, if, if all I had as an option to weld this was a MIG welder, I'd, I'd MIG weld it. If all I had as an option to weld this was flux core, I'd flux core weld it. Considering that I have all options available to me, I'm going to stick weld it. The reason I'm going to stick weld it is because it's severely contaminated. Not only is it contaminated because uh, this has been powder coated, it's also been broke for a while so there's rust in between. It's also very thin metal, meaning I'm not going to grind it a whole lot because I'd be grinding away, I'd basically be grinding a hole in it, it's so thin. So the reason I'm going to stick weld it, I'm going to use a 6010, you could also use a 6011. The reason I'm going to stick weld it is because the stick welder handles the contamination really well. But when you're welding something like this, doesn't matter what process you're using, I've decided I wanted to stick weld it. But whatever process you're using, uh, when you have a crack like this, you got something where it's cracked all the way around these three sides. This other one's obviously worse. But I want you to look at here what I've done. I'm not going to try to just start right here and, and weld around that crack. You'll melt a hole in it doing that. I'm going to tack, tack, come over here and tack, come over here and tack, tack. I might tack here and here and here and here and then come back and tack between them tacks. Tack, tack, tack. You see all these little spot welds I've made? If you're dealing with something that's thin or a time where you've got a gap or something you've got to fill in, don't start at the edge of it and weld towards the middle. Now, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Think about what you're doing when you're welding and you're manipulating heat. You always will be colder when you start. It always will be hotter when you stop. If you're welding up a crack like this, this right here is the most vulnerable area to burn through, right here. If the, if the crack starts here and, and the crack goes all the way around these three sides, this area right here in the middle is the most vulnerable place to burn through. This is the farthest away from any massive combined metal. So if you start right here and you try to weld up this crack, by the time you get here, you've melted completely through. You'll have a whole bunch of weld right here and it's getting so hot right there you can't even add weld to it. If you're going to weld something up like this in, a, in the sense of a repair, right here's where you want to start. Start welding where you need the least amount of heat. Finish welding where you need the most. A start will always be thicker. It's colder. As you continue to weld on a piece and it gets hotter, your stop or the end of your weld is going to be the hottest. Start welding where you need the least amount of heat and finish welding where you need the most. And if you're welding up a crack like this or filling a gap, go to the center and tack it. Bridge one tack across there. Then move a little ways and bridge another tack. Then go all the way to the other side and bridge a tack. Then maybe tack between those tacks. Skip around and build you a bridge across that gap. Now, if you're dealing with really thick steel or burn through is not an issue, you don't really have to do that so much. But this is paper thin. And a, and, a, and a novice welder going to repair this will just burn right through it. 
but it's because of the method that they're going at it. So think about what you're doing and manage heat. I skipped around and tacked and then welded between the tacks and got got a bead ran over it to the point that I could actually just start at one end and weld. The 6010 in this situation is going to give me a really deep penetrate and weld. That's probably actually even bulging through on the other side. Now I'll add some plates to this and uh, reinforce it so that it doesn't happen anymore. We'll